Pleasure to introduce you to Paola Tognazzi. Um, Hello. Okay, my, my talk is not very uh, intellectual, it's simple. So I hope <laughs> I'm a bit embarrassed right now. Okay, so <laughs> I made myself. Okay. Um, so the, uh, well, this is a, a drawing. In a way, it's just to represent, uh, it's an interactive drawing. I do it with the sensors, like uh, the audience, uh, wherein the sensors can, can create visual compositions. Uh, and I put this one as, um, to begin the talk, because it's from the project called Gene29, which wanted to um, kind of uh, uh, represent what happens inside our body on a very micro, micro level, and give it um, like an anthropomorphic life, like a cartoon. So it was imagining what happens in the real inside and imagine that the little cells and the DNA and those little teeny arg uh, organisms have a life and they speak and they um, and because they do have a life, and they are making who we are outside. So, yes. Okay, I'm Palatinazzi. I'm an artist, multimedia, choreographer, and a physical interaction designer. I put the background because I thought it was kind of uh, interesting that my, um, my trajectory started from the uh, University of Philosophy, but it was 23 years ago, so don't... And, and then went into the physical, um, in the physical field of uh, theater making and interactive to the direction of dance theater within interactive audiovisual installations. I've been working with Sasha Valls, Mintanaka, Nir De Wolf, uh, Studio Azzurro, and Daniela Kurz. They make, um, check it out because they make really beautiful works. And right now I work as a physical interaction designer for software companies. This is a bit of an example of Daniela Kurz's work. She's a, a ballet choreographer and she works with multimedia installations. And I found this article like three weeks ago, which extremely like in just few sentences practically explained uh, all my trajectory. Because what I forgot to say before, it was that when uh, I made the transition from the academic field into the dance field, it was, I was, uh, that was like the marking moment that totally marked my, uh, you will see that all my work, it, it came from that moment, you know, to the realization of how much smarter, without insulting anybody, is the body respect to us. Because I was, I was coming from the philosophy, so uh, when we would uh, sit and talk, I could speak for hours and hours. And then would come the 16 years old ballet dancer, and she would just say three words. But those three words said everything. And it was like, okay, there is something there, like how they, uh, the training of the body and the use of the body can um, change the way we think. It makes us much faster, like it summarizes it. Uh, it makes the, the thinking much faster, straight to the point, uh, and very sharp. And I love that synthesis. So I've been really analyzing uh, the dancers uh, and analyzing how they um, use what they learn, like what they, uh, what they knew from the body, how they applied the intelligence and the coordination that they had to develop to the way they express themselves also verbally and uh, conceptually. And there is this um, Daniel Wurpert, he's a neuroscientist, and he was just saying that uh, there was this uh, interview and video that they, uh, he was speaking about uh, why we have brains, no? And everybody would think that the brains are for uh, thinking and analyzing. And he says, correctly so, it's absolutely wrong. The brain, is, uh, it has been developed to control movement. And he was explaining uh, that uh, indeed to, um, to move, there is so much, but really billions and billions of information that we have to send through the body to control all the coordination. And if we would have to, um, uh, if we would have to say what we are going to do uh, in words, it would take us like one day just to say that I did this, uh, to explain all what I had to do in order to, do, to make this movement. Because it's not just the arm, it's the transition of the weight and all the links. And, um, but, the brain, uh, but the body can do it very fast because the brain is for that, is to control all this data. 
and not the rational or the thinking, how, how we say. And he said that to understand movement is to understand the whole brain. And therefore it is, it is important. Um, and obviously that movement is uh, what we have to interact with the world. Like it's uh, um, just to get food, to attract the attention of people, uh, to survive, you know, if something happens, uh, it's our... Um, and there is the, this is the link, then I will pass it. And he was making a bit, I mean, the guy is funny, he was making uh, a reference to in, in, artificial intelligence because uh, neuroscientists and programmers, uh, for them it took very, very little time to create a supercomputer who could, be, who could beat anybody in the world at chess. That was easy. Like, to make the supercomputer that would be, beat any brain in the world, that was the piece of cake. But then, to create a machine, like a robot, able to actually move, the little piece in the chessboard that, that they still haven't managed. Like, uh, and he was making these jokes about M MIT research department. Well, okay, we need to move the big finger. Okay, we go. Three years later, okay, now we can move the big finger. No, but now, wait a second, now we move this finger, and then, okay, another three years of research just to control how, just to show how difficult is, um, how complex is movement. And okay, this is my artistic statements. Wait, I, I made this beautiful uh, slide, slide, slide. Uh, the, the artistic statement of my work is like that the body speaks. So all this is just to show how the body is, um, is talking and is speaking continuously without uh, us even wanting to. So if I look at all of you now, I'm observing your physicality and I'm observing the position, how relaxed, how contracted, where the body is shif shifting towards to, and that is telling me, it's telling me, it's giving me a lot of information. And um, when I say, and this is when I'm looking at you, but, the, but my work is, some, is a bit more about self voyeur is about, uh, I, want, I want to look at myself as well, I want to be aware, uh, the same way I'm aware, looking at you of how you're feeling, I want to I wanted to regain that same consciousness, because now I know I'm nervous, but uh, sometimes you, you, when you're very busy, you don't realize how nervous, stressed uh, or, uh, you are, or how your body is in the wrong position, which is, in, uh, which is causing you to get injured. So I wanted to, um, I created this interactive system in order to make the body talk and inform me and everybody who uses it of their, um, to make them aware by creating noise of uh, that they are moving and they are maybe in the wrong position. It's not that he's gonna tell you you're in the wrong position, but to make you aware that you're moving body parts that you're not aware that you're moving. And I'm thinking about a lot when you work, I've been working a lot with computers and when I, while I was dancing and I developed this big injury in the neck because repetitive um, movements. And that was also not a big motivation. And then that uh, the body's movement and that we learn through movement. That's how we learn. We learn coping and uh, we learn by moving. It's, it's not uh, by listening, it's really by coping and, and moving is how we, we physically, we, um, physicalize and absorb the information. And then there was this um, a bit, part a bit more uh, about the world of arts, so I wanted to give a voice to the body of the audience. I wasn't any more interested in having dancers performing, but I wanted the, real, the, the audience, the real spectator, in this case would be you, that to, to, to use the system to experience it for he, first hand, so that you, you would get uh, um, because the target was to give, uh, in a short amount of time, a glimpse of what I learned in the, in the dance academy. Okay, Peter, oops. So this is how it works. Those are the sensors, and uh, uh, they're the Wii. Uh, I used the Wii because they were super cheap, six, six years ago, and they have an accelerometer, and they are inside the bracelets. And when you're moving, you... Um, you um, you practically, uh, it's associated to either sound, but also visuals. In this case, in this particular case was uh, just uh, sound, no? That you're moving, you can, um, in the system, you can put to each sensor a different sound, and moving the body according to the physicality, the quality of the movement, you, you change the speed, uh, and you create, uh, so you can create different tempos. So I have videos, so let's go straight to them. So this is people wearing it. 
Uh, this is important. Well, yes, but I will go back to it. Jesus. <laughs> okay. A lot of slides. Um, I'm going to show, uh, because to connect it in a way to the body-mind centering technique, this is um, a lady. She came to the exposition. She wore the sensors. This was the, the second prototype we had. And she went, like, she went on, on her own. I didn't explain her anything. And she, she stayed there for half an hour playing with it. It's like uh, on one, uh, on this bracelet, uh, she was having a voice uh, with a text, uh, and on the other, Nine Inch a song from Nine Inch Niles, because it's copyleft. And you must have noticed that when she did, uh, up, she was saying absence of pleasure, well, it was a text that was recorded. And um, because you can record text and go straight into the system, and then you can modulate it with the movement. But in, when she did this gesture, she made a strong accent. And the other sensor that she, she, didn't, she didn't want to use in that moment, but it, it was triggered because of the movement compensation. And that was um, the first time uh, I, I, I made an exposition. We had like eight sensors, like, uh, like in the whole, uh, like four for each, for each uh, like uh, two, uh, an arm, two the legs, and uh, two and two. So whatever you were, like you would have to, um, in that case, uh, it was a bit easier because it was very um, compatible sounds, so there was not much risk, but it was really, uh, made you aware that any teeny tiny movement that you would do or shifting of weight, um, it would trigger the sounds coming from the other sensors. So it was very difficult to control it. Uh, well, mm, no, it was to make you aware exactly of that, of how much is going on in the body. And, um, you know, this I will be, come back to because, shit. This is another video. From uh, I did it in China. It was a workshop in China. Well, uh, and it is to show the difference. The other, uh, the other video was in Italy. Why oh, she doesn't play? It doesn't look very interesting, but it's, this guy, it was absolutely incredible because um, look, at, look specifically at him, how he moves. Then I will explain why. Hey, Jesus. Because well, this sucks. Um, it was like a perfect Cunningham technique. Watching, watching this guy was, he was a dancer. I mean, th then he confesses it. Um, they were in the, um, as you've seen, the first girl, she was really articulating a lot the joints in order to control and to, to play with the sounds and use it uh, to make the, the body play longer, no? She, was re she had to really like do, um, use the whole articulation, while this guy, as you will see in the next, in the next uh, short movie, he's not using the articulation 
the fragmentation of movement, uh, he's using the weight. Uh, when I'm speaking of Cunningham, it was because, um, as, you, as you notice, he was perfectly lined. He would never push the arm behind the shoulder blade. The arm was always in front. There was co it was completely connected to the torso. And, um, and, and he, you know, like, he, he never did this. He was really, like, very aligned. And that what creates is a, a physical movement quality, which we call it extremely grounded, which is like cutting through the, um, it creates the wind. It's really, it has so much weight that it really push the air. And with that weight, he could, uh, having this uh, incredible, uh, uh, feeling and uh, control of the, of the weight of his uh, body, he could control the sensors uh, extremely well. Because here, for example, you can change a lot of tempos. Uh, the first time he wears it, uh, like he... As you seen, it's like, it, it, was, uh, it was a very famous song, The Promise You Made, but I, I like to use, um, when I do workshop, I give workshop, I like to put these uh, songs that has a huge, um, uh, by playing with the tempo, you can create really different effects, so you can really perceive it, and you can play. Personally, I go crazy and stop jump, jump around. And I like, uh, he was, um, um, but as you notice, he, he was really changing a lot in tempos, and it looks easy, but it's not easy at all to have that sort of control that you can play with. Um, okay, this is it. Uh, and then, um, I use this, okay, this is not, not yet. Um, practically, um, what I've, my work is about creating physical, like narratives in movement. Uh, so there are interactive narratives using, using the physicality of the, um, of the body. And um, another thing that I studied a lot uh, in the, when I was in the, in the theater school was body-mind centering, which is a technique that analyzes movement from an experiential and um, psychological, physiological, and um, practice uh, um, experience. And it's, it's kind of personal. It's not like ballet or canning. Am I boring you? Because they're all intellectual. I know she's the, the only dancer she's. <laughs> But like, um, because um, in dance, like for example, there are certain techniques like ballet or Cunningham or Graham, where more or less you have to, you have not to look alike, because it's not about looking alike, but there are certain criteria just for alignment and for uh, the space, because you have to share the space with other dancers. So. But uh, body-mind centering, you know, is completely personal. The same uh, movement or the same, um, concept, everybody applies it totally differently, and it's uh, basically it's because everybody uh, engage naturally, we have different physicality that we engage, um, that we have this pattern. It's, it's like a pattern that we, each of us, uh, um, have. And, uh, for example, wait, beep, 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 okay. Um, it's, um, this is the fluid system from the, um, from the body-mind centering uh, uh, technique. And it's divided in blood that can be, uh, be broken in venous and uh, arterial or capillary. Then you have the lymph quality, synovial, CSF, cellular, and fat. The thing is like, uh, from a choreographical, and, and a choreographer who works with musicians, this, this technique, this, um, yeah, it is a technique. It's extremely interesting because it completely shows how different movement qualities, that they are different because they engage different physical systems, like arterial, obviously, you're using the, um, 
the, um, the blood, so the, well, if you go lymph, you're using the articulation of the body, synovial, you're thinking of the fluid between the joint, like every different um, uh, part, uh, organic part of the body is affecting how we move, no? And each quality, it could be referenced to a, to a tempo in music. For example, Venus is like a vals. It has this momentum. One, one two, three, one. it has this momentum, no? Like, um, like uh, art arterial is more like house music, and two, three, it's really like um, African house. It's really super energetic. And the system uh, really affects, uh, like you, if you engage them, they really affect how you feel. For example, the lymph system, as you see, it's a reference to ballet, tango, and martial arts, because it's all about creating shapes. It, it engages also the blood system, obviously, because it's strong. So it's about marking the space, and it's really uh, creating a delimitation. But by doing so, um, it uh, engages the lymphatic system. And the lymphatic system is, the, is a system that actually is cleaning our body. When we are sick, we need the lymphatic system to kick in and to cleanse us, and, uh, and it makes you feel better. For example, if you, if you, if you feel crap, like, uh, and you need to feel better, it's, uh, it's better to do a ballet class than to do a buto class, because ballet class, martial arts, uh, and um, Tango, they have this really energetic power that makes you, and that makes you, and plus energy, and they're also lymphatic, no? While Buto, it could be, for example, Buto is this Japanese uh, introverted uh, dance. It could be more associated to the synovial, because it's about the space between. It's not about the joints, the bone. Yeah, it is about the joints. It's not about the bones. It's not about the muscular masses. But it's about really like breaking, the breaking into the space. So you're like a marionette and you're like unfolding and unfolding, which is, to, to watch it is fantastic, it's super, it's super beautiful. But it is true that in order to engage it, you need to, um, uh, you need to not erase, but uh, you need to choose not to engage different systems, like the lymphatic system. So sometimes like different system makes you, some makes you feel, uh, Super, um, very well, and some actually, if you're not used to that, it makes you feel sick. So you can really get dizzy. But perform at, uh, as a, from a performance perspective, they are gorgeous. And that was, and, and all those, those studies, uh, it um, experience, because I actually physically experienced it, um, it, it totally fascinated me, the, the, their association to music, because, for example, synovial, if you, well, you were not here, but for example, the other day there was a dancer and she was, with every joint, she was creating a sound. And because she was moving a lot, she would create this kind of Indian sound. But it was because it was synovial, you know, it was the whole articulation. So it's like taka 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 versus a, a valse or versus a um, one, two, three, four, uh, normal four or a five in music. Cunningham used a lot the five. And trying to get to conclusion, um, practically, it's, uh, this is a little, uh, this is a performance I made because um, besides the research and besides, I always try to, to bring the, how to, how to bring the installation to a narrativity and uh, in a context of performances. So this is, was, um, if you, the theme was like, uh, why do we have uh, organs in pair? when we only have one heart, which was a bit poetic and uh, funny. Um, and I was asking the audience uh, questions about the body, no? And uh, one is like, but eh? It's in Spanish. In me, you have to know me, but tame in the, in the nice uh, little prince, uh, not, not in the um, domination, but into the getting to know somebody by being there every day and by, by knowing, being able to communicate with it.
Practically here I was, um, all the audience, it was a theater piece, but all the audience was on stage with me. And uh, the text that was coming from the censors, it was uh, uh, produced by the audience because I gave them a little questionnaire, what would you say your body if it could speak? And the answers went into the system. And, and then uh, there was a piece and at the very end I, I put the censors to four people in the audience because we had four of them and everybody else had to follow. And the one in, had to, everybody had to follow the one in front. At, at first it was me to motivate them, so everybody would participate and the movements was, were completely directed from the sound. So it was, uh, it was like directing an orchestra. I was not watching them because I was in front, but I was listening. And it was the sound of the sensors of their movement, the ones that were guiding me, and uh, it, it was the sound that was guiding them. Un equipo de científicos intenta crear túneles en la madeja espacio-temporal. Es el año 2078. Un equipo de científicos intenta crear túneles en la madeja espacio-temporal. Podemos dibujar dinámicamente estas escenografías. This was just to show that you record it and immediately you can modulate in real time and you're making the drawings. So this is some of the drawings that uh, I used to visual, I program to visualize what happens inside of us. And this is a video so I don't have to speak because it's even in English. It's an interactive multi-user audiovisual installation for physical spaces and digital facades. It's based on wireless movement capture technology. It analyzes the energies and dynamic rhythms of the body, translating them into musical and visual projections. Nowadays we use a lot of technology, but what happens is that when we are sitting down, typing, we don't realize how we are using our body and we are injuring ourselves. For that, I started developing systems in which the persons, to use them, have to move the whole body and are not restricted to a static relation with computers. Two persons, each with his or her iPhone or iPod touch, draw the visuals together, feeding back and being inspired the one to the other. To the touch screen, they can change the type of brush with which to draw or the audios to play. Each painting narrates the stories of the body and portrays the dynamic architectures that constitute our interior, the identity of our movements and the relation with the outside world. Our inner world takes control of the exterior one, transforming the architectures of the city into organic spaces and a live organism. That's it. Thank you. So, we open the questions and debates. <clears throat> Thank you. That was, um, that was a really interesting presentation and I've I've actually got a whole list of questions I want to ask, but I'll stick to one. Um, and you mentioned that you, in one of your videos that there were some trained dancers in uh, engaging with your work. And I'm thinking about the role, what the technology does to us as we're trying to engage with it, and whether people, trained dancers, responded differently in that environment, did they already know what their body could say? 
And so did you find that people who were, like myself, a layperson who doesn't know how to dance would probably fall over if I tried, um, whether they responded differently when they were connected with the sensors? Is that Okay, no, I didn't say that in, I work for, with uh, professional dancers. I said that just one happens that the Chinese guy, I discovered he was a professional dancer. And it was absolutely true that you, you could definitely see. No, usually I'm, I'm not directed to professional dancers because uh, they know it's, it's not for that. They absolutely have um, control of their body. It's for the people who, um, it's for the people who do not have that awareness uh, that I want to, I want to, to give a glimpse of, what's, uh, of what the body can do. To have this uh, is a perce perception, is to learn to perceive and to, to sense the body. But a professional dancer like Jennifer, I mean, they they're absolutely, they already have that. They don't, obviously, they can do marvel, marvelous things with the sensors, uh, but I'm not, um, I'm not interested. And I'm already a dancer, well, I was. Um, so I do know what to map. So when, when I'm programming, when I need to, to design the system, I, I don't need to work for, uh, with a dancer for him, to or for him or her to tell what to map, because that I already know. So I'm using that knowledge to map the system, the parameters, so that you and people who do not have that physical experience can, can uh, interact with it and can develop, um, can develop this awareness and enjoy it. I just, can I just respond very quickly? Because uh, I just wondered if, um, if there was no sense in which a dancer engaging with technology, whether that changes, and I, I suppose this is a question to the dancers in the room, engaging with the technology, does that not, does what your body do when it's connected to the technology not change? No, so I, I just wondered if, okay, I'll, I'll leave that one. I'll, um, I, I wondered if the experience of your body, what your body can say, differs when you're connected to a computational sensor than if you were dancing without any sort of um, without any technology connected to you so there's a, a sense that you can discover what your body can say even a professional dancer can discover something new about the body in the process yes, no, no no it is it is uh, it is different it's absolutely different like even it's for everybody, professional or non-professional movers, you do, you do perceive the space and you do perceive how it's not about shapes, because sometimes people think about shapes, position and gestures, and this is, it has absolute, absolutely nothing to do with gestures and, and positions. It's about really the quality of the energy. You know what I was trying to explain with the body-mind centering, which is the quality, different quality of movements, uh, different ways you put weights, uh, and different ways you, you go from one place to the other. And for a dancer, it's, it's marvelous. Like, it's, 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 as, as much as for a normal, for a non-dancer, like, it's extremely enjoyable also for the dancers. Uh, I'm just, like, the, my installations are open, like ev everybody can, uh, can participate. I just don't, uh, um, what I meant is like, I just don't make uh, works specific for the dancers, it's for everybody. Thank you. Beautiful. Uh, I wonder what would be the difference between painting with the iPhone and in terms of feeling the body and movement um, painting with uh, uh, oils, by instance, because uh, when I paint, when I when you don't paint, of course, in uh, over a table and all of this, but painting with pens, uh, with a with a big panel and all of this, and you get messed with the painting, you really not only feel the movement and your body, but a mess with. The, uh, painting and everything, you know, it's very plastic and you really feel the body all the time. So what this would be different? It is a sort of similar question. 
No, no, it's a very differ different question. <laughs> because uh, he, he was, uh, and the answer to him was more related to the sound, because the, um, the installation is like the, the whole system is merely aural. So that, that's my, but obviously because it's, uh, the orality is kind of very difficult to show around because it's difficult to share the space, etc., etc. At the end, I started to make also the visuals because it was just easier, no? But, uh, um, the difference is like uh, when you paint uh, with the oil, yes, there is, you have a physicality at which you cannot, uh, no, definitely you cannot uh, achieve with, uh, with, with, with sensors. But it was, it was not for that. Like the, the visual part here is about uh, um, painting together with other persons because it's not so much about you. Um, it is about representing, because it's not about painting, it's about really representing the dynamics. So the, the, the portrait is not something outside. And what I want to show is the, the structure, the architecture, the dynamic architecture that is happening in our body while we are moving. Because when we are moving, we are twisting, we, are, um, we, have, we, we twist, we make a lot of torsions, uh, uh, in the muscles, in the bones, in the joints, uh, and um, those are like um, the elements of our architecture, like a building. But this is also the architecture that we do have inside, but we, we don't pay attention, because we only pay attention to the skeleton, so this kind of like, you know, the skeleton thing, but we do not pay attention to the architecture of everything that is the ligaments, the muscles, the tendons, uh, that together, they're not like a flat bidimensional, but they're really like moving. So that's what I want to portray with the, um, with the drawings. It's not like painting. And the thing is like that you can do it also with other persons, like you, it's like uh, two, three, four persons together, each they can compose and they're feeding back each other. And that's also interesting because you create kind of a game. And, uh, and then when you see the little things, is what I was saying at the very beginning, that is, uh, I want to represent the, the gene, the, little, the different genes, the little microorganism, that is, um, because I was studying uh, uh, dystrophies, muscular dystrophies, and, and those happen at the genetic level, and it's because some genes just for example, there is a muscular disability because one gene starts to reproduce much more than, than the normal. And in a way, it's very sexy because it's somewhat, uh, you would say it's sensual. Like there is this gene that starts to reproduce really a lot. But what happens is that by reproducing so much, it collapses the space. And by collapsing the space, the muscles have no more space for breathe, like in the cells, and they contract. So I was studying this dystrophy, and that's how it came gene 29 which is like this representation of this, the um, reproduction of the repro see, re reproduction and um, modularity of the genes that uh, have uh, that is, are exploding out of us because there is no more space and it collapses they just explode out okay thank you i think